So it's been about a week since Apple released iOS 18 to the entire public, and I'm sure everybody's been playing with all their new features and customizing their home screens, but one of the biggest updates that came to iOS 18 was these quality of life updates that iMessage got, right? Now we're able to do some RCS messaging to message our Android counterparts, schedule messages for later, so I'm gonna do a complete walkthrough in this video of every single new feature that came to iMessage and why I think it's one of the biggest updates in years. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's jump right into iMessage and everything that came with iOS 18. Now, do keep in mind, no matter which iPhone you have, this is running iOS 18, so all of those Apple intelligence features will not be part of this iOS 18 update. I'll give you guys a sneak peek at the end, so stay tuned if you guys want to see what's coming with 18.1. But for now, let's focus on iOS 18 and all the new things that you can use right now. So let's open up a Messages app, and the first thing that you're going to notice is going to be the new Tapbacks situation. So first and foremost, Tap back is when you double tap on any message to be able to react to them. And with iOS 18, not only does it look completely different, but it also adds some additional functionality. So first and foremost, you do see that they added some color to these tap backs. Before it was just kind of like a grayed out reaction. But now you know you have the pink heart, the yellow thumbs up, the orange thumbs down, and things like that. But then also you notice you can actually scroll through here. And basically what that means is you can react with any single emoji as a tap back. So if I want to react with maybe a question mark right here, I can now do that. And now you can see that it did get added on there. Now again, I am texting myself, that's why it's doubled down right here. But if you double tap again, you can not only get to see all the different tap backs you have options wise, but then you get to see here in full format who reacted to it and how they did react to it. And you can even tap back here to go back to it. So if you're in a giant group chat with 30 plus people, you get to see exactly who reacted to it with what type of emoji or what type of tap back. Another quick shortcut for the emojis is to just tap that little gray emoji icon, and then you can go down all the way down here and get full access to every single one of your emojis. But not only that, you can actually tap on the stickers here and react with a sticker as well. So if I want to react with a sticker, you can see there, if I double tap, I now did react with a sticker, which you can see right here. So. The new tap back functionality is great to have. It adds a little bit more emotion. And if you wanna just express yourself with all these different types of emojis, you can now do that with either emojis, stickers, or everything in between. The next one is similar and it has to do with stickers as well, but you can now actually add a sticker and an emoji in an inline reply with no issues whatsoever. So if I wanna do hello, how are you? And then go into here and add a sticker, you can now do that in the middle of the message, whereas previously you could not do that. So if I send that right there, it'll add as an inline reply. I can see that it's happening, and you can see that there is a sticker right there as well. Again, do take into account that I am texting myself, that's why it's doubling up, but the idea is fully there. This next one is actually huge, and it's not something that I even knew that I wanted until it was actually out, and that's gonna be multilingual keyboard support. Now, this is for all the people that have friends that speak multiple languages, and for my specific use case, is being able to text my mom, because my mom does speak to me in Spanish, and I reply to her in English, both when we are texting as well as when we are speaking in person. But now you can actually do a multilingual keyboard, so if you wanna type out half in Spanish and half in English or any other languages, you can now do that. So if you go down into your general, go into your keyboard, go into keyboards right here, add a new keyboard, we're gonna look for Spanish, and then you can either add a new keyboard or add to the English keyboard, meaning that it's gonna be all in one keyboard, we'll press done. If you go back to our messages, You'll type in Spanish, hola, how are you? And it won't try to autocorrect because it knows that I'm speaking in both English and Spanish. So I love this new feature and this is gonna be great for people that speak, you know, something like a Spanglish or like to speak bilingually to different people in your family or with other friends as well. Some other cool quality of life updates that iMessage has got is going to be text effects and text formatting. So believe it or not, before iOS 18, you, you could actually not format your text at all. But now you can, if you go into text effects, First th that you see here is gonna be all that formatting tool. So you have your bold, your italic, your underline, and even your strike through. So you can send that as is. We'll send it like that. And you can see even down here, when it does bring up the text in Spanish and English, which is that bilingual keyboard that I mentioned all earlier, or the multilingual keyboard, to give you an idea of what that looks like. And another little telltale sign that you know you're using a multilingual keyboard is if you zoom in to the space bar, it'll have an EN and an ES for English and Espanol. And it will also abbreviate other languages down in your keyboard right there so you know what type of keyboard you're using. But now let's go back to the text formatting like I mentioned. As you can see, now you can bold, italicize, underline, and strike through anything that you want or anything that you highlight. But it doesn't stop there. You also get text effects and they're brought up in one of two ways. So if you type out something that has, that looks like it's gonna have some sort of maybe exclamation, you can see that it gets auto-suggested as a bloom. So if I type on here, it's gonna bloom it, we'll send it through, and then you'll see that it does come in as a text effect for the other person, which is nice to see. But then another way to access it is if I type in hello again, and then we go over here, 
and we go to text effects, you see that we now have all the different options for this text effect. So you can make it big, which kind of makes it big again. You can shake it, you can make it explode, you can bloom it again, you can make it jitter, ripple, nod, and then finally make it go small. And what's nice about this is that you can do this on a per word or per phrase basis. So if you type in hello, you can have the hello be small, but then you go back into your text effects and you can have that one shake. So it's on a per word basis if you want to get creative with it and start to send these interesting messages that all have these different jumps and effects along the line. So now this next feature has to be probably one of my favorite features and I cannot believe it took this long for it to be a feature of iMessage and it's gonna have to be the ability to schedule messages for later. So if you go into a regular message, you press this little plus sign, you now have a new option called send later. If you tap on there, you get this new kind of layout and UI to be able to set out exactly when you wanna send it and what you wanna send. So I'm gonna schedule this to go one minute out. So if I do today at 10.09, we'll do AM and we'll type in test, we'll press send here and then you can see that it does send in this little kind of dotted format. So that's to let you know that it hasn't been sent yet, but it will send at 10.09. You can even edit it right here if you wanna edit the time or send the message immediately or delete it as well. And one beautiful thing about this new format is that even if your phone runs out of battery, it'll still send that message after the fact. So let's say I set up a, a send message for 10.30, but my phone runs out of battery at 10.20. At 10.30, it'll still send that message because it was already sent to those servers. And if you go out and come back into the message, you can see that it's not there, but if you swipe up, you can see that it's still in that send later format. So eventually it's gonna send out and you can see that it immediately just sent out and it was delivered. So that's a beautiful way to now schedule a bunch of messages whenever you see fit, if you do wanna do that, which I love to do. Another huge feature that finally came over to iMessage or to the iPhone and iOS is going to be RCS support. Now this was a big one because again, the blue bubble versus green bubble situation, it's very unfortunate, I hate that it's a thing, but you know, to Apple's fault, they've been making it very difficult to have a good experience texting Android phones from iMessage. And that's why people go to things like WhatsApp or Telegram or other messaging apps to have kind of like a level playing field when messaging between two different OSs. But now with RCS support, that does bridge the gap a little bit. So if you go to your message settings, you go down to RCS messaging and you just make sure that that's toggled on. And what RCS stands for is rich communication services and it basically allows you to have a much better messaging experience when messaging between Android and iOS. So you get to have full-fledged media messages, so you get to have full-fledged videos and full-fledged photos. No longer will it be pixelated and annoying and things like that. You'll also have the ability to react and tap back to messages. There's still no inline replies, but I'm sure that'll come soon. And then you also get the three dots when somebody is typing away, so those typing indicators. So you'll know for sure that you're using RCS when you have that toggle turned on, but then also where you actually type out your message, it'll say RCS messaging, so you know that it's being sent that way. So I love that RCS messaging is kind of closing the gap. Unfortunately, Apple will never go away from the green bubble versus blue bubble, but I do like that it kind of levels a playing field. It does make it a lot easier and a lot more of a better experience when messaging somebody outside the Apple ecosystem. And then last but not least, we do get messages via satellite. So before when the new SOS satellite feature came out about two years ago, Again, it was mostly for SOS and emergency services, but now you can actually message via satellite, just a regular iMessage if you need to. So if you are off grid and you need to send a message because you know you just wanna notify somebody that you're out with no service, you can actually just set up the satellite connectivity and send a message via satellite. So here, this is the demo and it basically just helps you find out exactly where the satellites are, to find out exactly where you need to be. And then eventually you will be able to send a full-fledged data text, so it will be a blue bubble. You can send some multimedia messages. Of course, it's not gonna be the fastest thing in the world, but it will work. So messages via satellite is gonna be great for off-grid stuff. And now again, like I mentioned, I do wanna bring up a small amount of the new Apple intelligence features that are coming out. So for instance, you do have the ability to have writing tools. So if I type in, hello, you can kind of select all, go to your writing tools, and then you get all these different writing tools to be able to summarize or proofread or rewrite these things. So again, this will all come with 18.1 if you have an iPhone that does support it, which will be the 15 Pro and Pro Max, and then anything newer than that. And then another cool one that'll be coming out is going to be the summarization notifications. So being able to summarize a bunch of text messages. So if you're in a big, huge group chat, you get a nice little one or two line summary letting you know what those 30 messages were. But enough about 18.1, let's finish up this video. So that was just about to do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there's a bunch of standout features for the new iMessage from RCS support to multilingual keyboards and everything in between. So I'm just excited that Apple continues to evolve iMessage to be kind of your all-encompassing messaging platform and not just a text message alternative. But let me know in the comment down below what you think of these updates. Are you already using them? What's your favorite one? What's one update that maybe still hasn't come out yet that you really want out of iMessage specifically? Let me know in the comment down below. But if you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one, 
YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right here, and I think you're gonna like this video down here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. We got some more content coming, so definitely stay subscribed. Also, consider becoming a channel member. You get some awesome perks.